Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 here in the pristine, untouched wilderness of the Calmlands. That seems to be about right. Yeah, there we go. Right, so you'll go through there. And because he reverses round on the corner, we are going to be left with a uh, um, few patches up through there that aren't going to be properly fertilised, but there's not a lot we can do about that. So, no, what I want to do is I just want to have a quick look in here. <clears throat> See the rollers. So, we've got that one, which is dirt cheap, 1,230. The rollers that I was thinking of were these. There's two of them here, but they're 15 grand a piece. Are there any others? No. It's that one. I don't want that. No, they are both 15,000. That one is up to 8.2 meters. It's 6.4 to start with. And that one is 6 meters. So this one here is 14,000 there. Uh, we can go up to 8 meter. And that goes up to 17 grand. So that's, that's rather expensive. This one here is 15,000. So this can go front or back by the look of it. That one can go front or back on the machine. That is 15,000. You've got a roller or you've got a grass roller. There, you've got options for both. But we would just take the roller. And that's 15,000. So that one is 6 meters wide. This one is 6.4 meters wide. So we'd probably go with that one. It is, you know, almost a grand cheaper. However, that one there is 1,200, which means that if we would do it, we would have to spend everything. I don't know that we would even get enough money to be able to do it. Because the we would have to we'll sell all of our straw. But I'm not sure there's going to be enough straw coming off that field because it's oats. And oats don't have so high a straw yield. I don't think they do anyway. Um, as the barley and the wheat. So I don't think that we're going to be anywhere close to having that. I think that's going to be a little bit of wishful thinking on our part. Right, let's go over this way. Oh! Well, well, well. I think we will hang around and wait. We'll hang around and wait for this one a bit. I think we can watch this one just, just for a little while. Um... Truth be told, I am actually about to go and stop doing my recording now for a little bit, so you can turn around. What are you doing down here? Let's have a look. If I have this one and I start the hired help down here in just a minute. Hired help can start there. And yeah, I've, I've literally got two passes left on this field. Ideal. I didn't think that we'd actually finish this, so it, it 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 has come along quite nicely. It's done the rolling. It's done everything that we needed it to do. All I've got to so I don't even know if I need to worry about getting another roller. I might not need to worry about that. We'll see. We'll see on that one. I, I'm not quite sure. I've got two passes left with the roller on here, and then that one's done. So uh, you you carry on there. And then the combine, he needs to be turning around now anyway. I think that trailer's going to be in his way. I decide he doesn't like it. Let me just stop. Alrighty then. That one just finished down over there. And this one is now carrying on. I am back doing some fresh recording. I found out that the reason that this tractor is so stripped down of extras and fancy bits and is also painted in this colour is according to some people in the chat um in the comment section is because it's an ex-military vehicle um john deere colors are this color for any vehicles that are sold to the military for um use for various different things so that's why the tractor is this color um so this also it would be a second-hand vehicle you um as far as i could get i mean i didn't actually go and look into it but as far as i could see um from the comment it, you wouldn't 
be buying one of these new. It would actually be bought as second hand, which is what we did. We did buy a used one. It was half price. Um, but, yeah, that's what it would have been. It would have been ex-military. So, um, yeah, I, I didn't know that. That's quite a cool little, pe uh, little piece of information right there. Now, we have gone and planted this one right here. We've got canola in that field there. I've got canola in this field up here. Now, technically, I want to plant corn up here next, but I don't have a corn planter and uh, don't have a corn header for my combine either. So it's going to be a little bit difficult to do that considering the amount of money we've got at the moment. We've got straw available in the oat field over there, which we're going to go and sell, but we're not going to get a lot of money from that. So we're still basically going to have to wait before we can do very much with it. So what we're going to do instead is we will skip planting corn and we will go straight to planting oats in that field, I think would be best. Although either or, it doesn't really matter. That won't be something that will be planted until the spring. Um, where we've had the oats... The next one in that field is going to be barley. So we'll be planting barley in there, um, which is an autumn crop. So that's the only one that we've got to worry about at the moment. So I'm going to take that one there, and then I'm going to put the cultivator on. And that's going to be ready for working in the field over here with the baler when we want that one. I'm just going to bring it out here and I'm going to stop it right about there. So we don't need to worry about that. You are going to keep going and doing your stuff here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let this one get up to the other end. And then I'm going to just run alongside it and unload it as it goes. We've got at the moment in the mill the oats busy working through so we've already got some flour in there and what i'll do is i'll let the flour all run through first and then we can move that out of the way and then we can go and do the next lot um allow the canola to run through as well um i'm gonna yeah we're just well we're kind of just sort of mosey on with it a bit like that there's no hard and fast way that we can do anything here really like we've just got to keep muddling along and trying to get some money from somewhere and that's going to be our biggest challenge is trying to get the money coming in now i've only got 300 euros at the moment um it has been pointed out that we seem to be just kind of treading water at the moment with this one because we don't have anything that's giving us a decent solid amount of money coming in like previously, we had contracts that we were earning extra money. We could go and do a load of contracts for a, a week or two, and that would get us a big chunk. Um, and prior to that, we had the forestry stuff, and we don't really have either option. I didn't want to focus exclusively on forestry again. I just felt that that would end up being somewhat tedious to watch and also to do. So I haven't gone and done that. I wonder if we're going to be able to get over there without too much trouble. We've got a lot of weight in this one now. Um, so we're kind of building up our farm without those benefits. And so it's, it's a different style. It's going to take a while. But that's the one thing with the Hardcore series is they've all... None of them have been particularly quick. None of them have been quick. So although we are kind of like not seeming to advance very quickly I don't believe we're all that far behind on the other ones um, like we've we've made some progress I mean yes admittedly we are we started a lot further along than we have in previous series and I feel that that has made a difference but we haven't progressed I mean, I think that we have progressed a reasonable amount. I'm I'm quite pleased with sort of the progress that we have made because we've created the extra fields and so on. We started off with just the one field down the bottom, and now we've got 
the big oat field over there. We've got the canola field over here that we're harvesting. And that one's sort of all done nicely with the fence around it. We're working on the hedgerow as we go. Um, but I feel like we are making some progress. We, we are sort of slowly getting somewhere, even if it's slowly. And I think that's got to count for something, surely. Now, I'm going to quickly drop this one back down in here. And I'm going to leave the trailer near the edge of the field. And then we're going to take this tractor over and we're going to start doing some baling. Now, I'm hoping I can leave the trailer there like that. And it's not going to run away down across the field like we've had previously. Really hoping that it's going to be okay there. So I'm going to run this one down and this one can have the baler put on and we will get started on that. And then we've got to go through and pick all those bales up. They will provide us with a little bit of income, which is desperately needed at the moment in order to be able to keep paying our wages, which is also desperately needed. Um, the other cash injection that I did in the previous series was to go around and collect all of the cheeses. Um, or truffles, we were saying they were at the time. But, well, yeah, same thing. Um, and I'm not doing that here. I'm not picking up the game cartridges. I was going to try and do this without picking up those game cartridges. Now, if it does get really bad and we just can't seem to make any decent progress, maybe I will um, like go and pick up those cartridges just to help things along a little bit. But at the moment, I'd like to try and avoid that. I would like to avoid doing anything like that and stick with like the original plan that we've already got here now i'm going to take this one on up round this way because this is where the track is and one out into the field here just like that although i did come down through there so i suppose really we could put a track through there and have that as an entrance into the field we could do that now, this is going to be a little bit slow because the baler doesn't whiz along the field all that fast, but I don't know, well, actually I have no idea how long this is going to take because we've not baled this field before and this baler is slow. It only does 12k, whereas if we get a big square baler, that is going to go whooshing along a whole lot faster. In the last series I used a round baler that was also fairly slow this one i want to use a square baler i would like to use a square baler that goes along at a decent speed that's something that i've been dreaming of for this series i think it's going to be just what we need keep everything moving forward and there right so we've done one pass along the side of the field what i might do no i can't i was gonna say well we could bring the, like, pick up the bales around the outside edge, and then go and get the, um, the who's we call it, the rake on another tractor, and have that one working up and down the field at the same time, but we haven't got the hired helps available, because we've got two jobs happening at the moment, but, I mean, what we could do, though, even though I've got two jobs going at the moment, if I was to once the combine has finished then have a hired help going in the field then that's that would actually work except that i've only got 140 euros left so i'm not even sure the combine's going to be able to finish the job before we run out of money to pay the hired help um which means that using a rake in here is kind of pointless it's going to cost too much money anyway i don't think it's going to be worth it and I'm not even sure that that rake is wide enough to put two rows into one on this combine. I mean, it might be. I suppose it would be just. The combine up there. Yeah, that really is touching co as to whether or not he's going to get to the end of the field before he runs out of money on it. I'm thinking that possibly won't in which case we might need to gather up some bales here run them up and sell them then we can come back carry on baling and do the rest of the bales i'm 
Obviously going to want to get that field over there prepared for the next crop. This field here is more important than that though. Because that the one over there, we can get that one started anytime. And we've got to do one lot of oilseed radish on that field. Whereas this one's got to have two lots. And also because this one's oats, we're going to be wanting to get barley planted in here. It's August at the moment. And actually, are we even going to be able to do it? Let me just double check. We can do one lot of oilseed radish, but whether we can do two, I'm not entirely certain. We're doing barley in here next. Uh, no. Where's the... Oh, there's the calendar. Right. Um, oh, September and October. So we plant now and then we plant again and then we can do it in October. That's all right. It will work out all right. I did, yeah, and now that I think about it, I did actually look at that previously in uh, when I was recording um, before. So we will actually be able to do it, but that means we have to get this one cultivated up and planted today, which is going to take a bit of time to do. It's not too bad, though. With the cultivator that we've got now, it is actually pretty good. And the AI has just completed its task with 73 euros left over. So I can't go and start cultivating anything else just now. Um, I think there's actually a little bit of grain left up there. I can, I'm not sure if there is or not. I'm looking up through there and trying to see what I can see. But I don't know whether it's just got like a... Because there's obviously a couple of patches that haven't had the um, cut crop spread across them. So there's going to be like a few little patches in the field that don't quite get enough, um, that don't quite get two lots of fertilizer. But that's absolutely fine. It's not worth going over the field and putting more fertilizer or doing another round of oilseed radish. Because one, it costs money with the wages for doing the work. And two, um, yeah, most of that is complete waste. I think the total yield in that field is going to end up being... Um, what would it be? Like may maybe gain us an extra 100 euros if we were to go and plant that field with a second lot so that everything had a double layer of fertilizer because of the amount that's already fertilized compared to what isn't. And if you have a look there, this is what I mean. Uh, growth, soil composition, there, look, see? So it's only those bits will get one lot of fertilizer rather than two. And I don't think it's worth messing around with that. So we've got needs plowing and needs rolling. So oh, there's a couple bits there that missed out on the roller. I'm not going to bother going back with them now. It's a bit late. Uh, there's nothing else on there that we need to worry about at the moment. Let us carry on. So we've done twice around the outside edge of the field. If I was to get halfway across this field and then bring the cultivator out here and start work, no, I don't think that's worth it. I don't think that's going to actually end up being worth it at all. Has anyone used one of these types of small balers? I've only ever used a small baler that has got the bale chamber off to the side. Like this, these new ones that they've now started making with the bale chamber above the pickup, this is this is very new. This this is a modern small baler, and for the longest time, a lot of people thought that they would never make um, like small balers had gone out of fashion, and no one was ever going to make them again. But there's enough need for small bales that they're able to manufacture these. Now I don't know how many companies do actually make them. See, we've got a Massey Ferguson one here. I have no idea whether or not other companies also still make small balers or have gone back to making small balers. And I've also got no idea if they are in the same configuration as this Massey Ferguson one here or if they're in the traditional pickup reel off to the side rather than underneath. So if anyone's ever driven one, anyone's ever operated one, let me know in the comments section. Is this something that you see regularly? Is it something that you've seen at all? Because I haven't. I've never seen one of these in real life. I've seen plenty of the other ones, the, the more traditional ones that we're all used to. 
but I've never seen one like this and I'd like to. I, I feel that that would be something that would be quite interesting to be able to take a look at and just see working in a field. I think the bales coming out of it would be peculiar. Just, well, kind, kind of peculiar. It, the, reason, the reason I think that they would be odd is because the ones that I'm used to are um, that they have the bale chamber on the side. So you've got the, the pickup reel and then the bale chamber is on the side of that. And with the bale chamber being on the side, there is a knife that cuts in and out. And so you have one side of the bale that is cut with the knife and that's the solid side and then you have the other side of the bale where the grass just pushed up against the side of the chamber and when you're making a stack of bales you always put the cut side out because that's the compressed side the other side is not as compressed it doesn't stay compressed as well so when you're building a stack of bales you always stack with the cut side out now obviously these bales here they don't have a cut side you can't put a cut side out um, but also it's a brand new machine so i'm wondering if it's able to you know get better compression on it something like that i i don't really know so i'm curious if anyone's used one <coughs> excuse me and also what are the bales like for handling and for stacking and things like that? Now, these days, people generally, when they're handling small bales and stacking them and so on, it's normal to try and find ways, methods and machines that will allow you to do all of the bale handling without actually having to manhandle the bales too much because of health and safety and also speed like it's a lot faster to have a machine that can go along and pick up the bales than it is to have to have a person go along and pick up the bales it's just a better way of doing it um i mean you could argue that the machine is that the person is the better way of doing it because you know jobs and so on but there's yeah i've, I've been the one doing the picking up of the bales and I'd rather just have a machine to do it because it would make it a lot easier and also probably a lot faster unless you're employing a whole load of people there's pros and cons to all of it we won't get into that debate right now um but the, yeah there's all kinds of ways you have like the the bale packers I actually think we've got we do don't we we have got those in this game if you go to bale loaders it's that one right there the multi-pack that picks up uh, 16 bale, uh, 14 bale, sorry, and turns it into basically a big bale. Um, it's a great machine, hideously expensive, way more than we can afford on here, and also uh, you then need a telehandler to be able to move the resulting bales, which does make life a little bit more difficult, whereas these you can just pick them up by hand. So, yeah, it's, it depends what you want to do and what your setup is and how you want to do things. But there's ways that you can do it without ever having to actually touch the bales. And there's ways you can do it without having to buy really, really expensive machinery all over the place. It just depends which option you want to use at the time. Um, but like I said, I would like to see comments from anybody that has ever used a baler like this what are they like are they actually any good to go and use um are they what are the what are the bales like that come out from them are they nice tight bales are they what you'd expect from a brand new baler because i would expect from a brand new baler something pretty good i would be a bit disappointed if i ended up with bales that were all soft and spongy without any means of really getting a, a decent tightly packed bale that i can use on the edge of a stack oh because that's that would sort of be my main concern i mean all balers you adjust the bale you adjust the tension on it so you can have a bale as loose or as tight as you want that's one of the you know joys of having a baler um is you get to choose what you're doing with it but um 
my main concern with it is back to how well they stack. How well you can expect your stack of bales to hold together once you have put them all up, got a nice big stack in a barn. Is it going to stay there until you want those bales in the middle of winter? Or is it just going to end up causing you problems? Because if they get too soft on the side, then the sort of the outside edge of the bales can shift and droop outwards, and that can cause the entire stack to collapse, which, to be perfectly honest, is, is not all that helpful. Not, not really. To, to Every time I want to back the baler up is exactly when a bale is just dropped out. Every single time. You notice that? It's not just once or twice. It is literally every single time. I'm just going to run across the end of it like that. And then I'm going to go up that way. And... And we're going to go racing off down through here. Well, I don't think I'm doing too bad. I think we're making fairly reasonable time on this. We've been at this job for, I would say... What have we been at this job for? About 20 minutes, if that. And we're nearly finished now. So it's, it's actually going faster than I originally thought it would. And the planting is going to go fairly well on this. The only thing that's going to take a while is obviously the rolling, because we've got such a small roller. That's the only bit of this job that will take a little while to get through. I just want to go and get that bit. And for once, the bale hasn't just dropped. So we are fine for backing that up there. And then off we go again. It does... I've seen, like, normally when you see bales being baled in small bales in fields where I live um, and anywhere, well, just about anywhere that I've travelled in England you, you normally if you see the baler working in the field it's always got a bale sled with it now whether it's an older bale sled that leaves the bales just in heaps or if it's a slightly newer one that leaves them in flat eights or something like that it's still, the purpose of the bale sled is to leave the bales in groups so that they can be handled more easily later on. I do remember seeing once, I was on my way up to, I used to work near a place called, a, a city called Newbury in um, the south of England. And I sort of, the, around the Newbury area, and it's quite, there's some quite big fields up around there. It's, it's, it's on, a, on a much larger scale. Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.